Um, so for the first time, so I'm getting 10, um, 10, 10 meter per second. Hmm. Then? Is that right? That's correct. For the next oh. one. Okay, so I'll just do the next one second, second, sorry. So next one will be 20 then? 20 meter per second? Mm -hmm. 20 will... meter per second and yeah, then... 50 meter per second. Per second. Yes, yeah, sir. Perfect. Okay. And then this is how far has it fallen after? So 10, 10 meter per second. 20 meter per second. Meter per second is unit of velocity. It no, is no, asking... also I was writing the first one. Oh, all right, so, all right. Okay. All right. Yes, yeah, so um, so for the B part, it says how far has it fallen after the. So we need to find out. We need to find out the. So we need to find out the distance for the second one. For the second one, yes, you have to calculate the distance. Distance, okay. So I'm getting one as the answer. Uh, so. The answer should be, the answer should be for how far it has fallen. No, it will not be one. C. So uh, we use the formula of um, V is equal to U plus AT, right? I mean, how could you, this does not calculate oh, the distance. No, you have uh, to calculate the distance. That, that you can't use. Okay, so, hmm. uh, so you'll have to either use the second one or the third the one. Third one, yeah. Or okay. the fourth one, in fact. But uh, these are easy to use. For example, this one. Let's see. Uh, since they have started falling from the top of the building, U is always going to be zero. So this zero. UT is factor. This portion of this, uh, I mean, S is equal to UT plus half AT squared. This UT will always be zero. You just have to calculate half AT squared. A is fixed, so in your calculator you write one zero point five into nine point eight one into just keep on changing. I mean half is zero point five, right? Or you could write half. I mean one by two, whichever. Into nine point eight one into time squared. So keep on changing the value of time. One squared will be one. So for the first one, the answer will be nine point eight one. Nine point eight one divided by two. Because 9.81 into 1 squared into 0 0.5. So half of 9.81. 4.90. Roughly 5 meters. Yeah. Or 4.9 meters. And then for uh, after how much second does it ask? Then 2 seconds. So it will become 9.81 into 2 squared which is 4 divided okay. by 2. So 4 divided by 2 will be 2. So 9.81 into 2. 9.81 into 2 that will give you uh, 1 second. 
But you should write down the complete 19, thing like how am I doing? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So okay. that so that's how far it would have fallen after two seconds. Two seconds. Okay. One second. Just write down two second. Let's go one second. Okay. Let me just quickly do it on the second slide. So now okay. we have to calculate the distance. So we'll use. <laughs> S is equal to ut plus half at squared since u is equal to 0 this will become 0 plus half into 9.81 and then you keep on changing the value over here which is either 1 squared so it will simply be 9.81 divided by 2 or it will become 0, point 0 plus half into 9.81 into 2 squared which will be 4 so 2 will cancel the square so it will become I mean just in this case I mean 4 mm -hmm. by 2 it will become 2 so 9.81 into 2 then you have to calculate after 3 seconds the next one yes sir for 3 seconds three so seconds. it will become 0 plus half into 9.81 into 3 squared which is 9 so 9.81 divided by 9.81 into 9 divided by 2 and then for 5 seconds it will become 0 plus half into 9.81 into 5 squared looks like you have done little practice at your school for such questions uh, school, did, did, so hmm. sorry, sir? did you cover this topic in this year or in like previous year this topic of physics this topic we started at night and then uh, we didn't really finish it off we were like gonna start this year also we're gonna do a recap of this topic again it's sort of something said about the way they teach at school they unnecessarily extend something which can easily be covered in seven to ten months they extend that course over a period of two three years i don't know for what reason yeah, so in many schools, like in our school, they extend. This. So they should have done this in ninth grade. This, 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 this is the this normal way. thing. The way they do it, like, I mean, my in my mm -hmm. mind, what should be done is like you pick up a subject, uh, teach mm -hmm. them physics, chemistry, math in one year, cover the entire syllabus, get them done with those subjects, teach them other subjects in the next year. Each year they keep on teaching you all six, seven, eight, nine subjects, whichever number, and then you appear for CIEs of just a few, and then next year there is again burden. You have to f sort of redo all the thing that you have done in previous year. Yes. Right. Sir. Anyways, yeah, sir. anyways, anyways, this is how it will be done. Mm -hmm. uh, if so you, also, I wanted to ask you: Can we have like an overlook over the syllabus once again? I just wanted to like see the of the right now the boards and right now. Or I mean, after we're done, no problem. You know, we like you know, if we're done with the questions, we can just see the syllabus. I just want to have a look over the syllabus and all, like the papers and you know, paper six and all. Okay. This is 2020 okay. Even so if even if mm -hmm. you do for the 2022 syllabus, wait, there isn't yeah, so. much of a difference. Oh, okay. I'll open that syllabus, no worries. So okay. here is your 2022 syllabus. Allahu Akbar, why did I open this thing? Oof. 2022 syllabus. Here you go. Your paper one is MCQs. You'll have uh, 30 or 40 MCQs. I mean, we'll just see. Isn't uh, paper one for core? I think. Uh, uh, oh, that is yes. Paper two and paper four. That is what I meant. Oh, when. Yeah. Uh, if I mistakenly, because most of my students they are from A levels, so for them oh, I'm used okay. to teaching paper one, paper two, that sort oh. of thing. Paper okay. in A levels you don't have this core extended thing. Whenever I say paper one, it means MCQs. Whenever I say paper two, it means the descriptive one. Mm -hmm. Since you are studying the extended syllabus, yes, you would be doing paper two and paper four. And but, paper six also so we have. Uh, I paper think six is uh, alternative to practical. Paper six is preferably yeah. done once we have covered all the thing. Then towards the yeah. end, uh, for a week or so, I'll have you practice just this paper six. Okay. 
I mean, we'll go through a lot of so questions. Is it easy? Uh, it's like a lot of weightage, like the 12, 12 marks for like each experiment or something. It's then easy. Like of... It's easy. Oh. It's easy. Okay. 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 It's easy. And uh, I mean, overall, IGCS is labors. You seem mm -hmm. to be a sharp student. Uh, I don't know if, I don't remember if I asked you for your previous grades, but if you put in, the thing is that, uh, students when they see that things are coming in easy they start taking the subjects slightly and they mm -hmm. don't put in that much time mm -hmm. if you are consistent with your effort throughout if you understand every the other problem with the students that i usually face is that i teach them a topic and just out of shyness or just that they feel that if a, they repeatedly ask that they haven't understood the topic if they ask for the explanation again the teacher would assume that they are dull or something so they don't ask for it again even though they haven't understood. So that's the biggest problem that I ever face with my students. Until this day, I think I've had just one student. Whenever I taught her, I asked her that, did you understand this? And if she did not, she'd straight away say, no, I didn't understand it. And mm -hmm. I, I find that fine. That's the thing to do. I mean, tell me if you haven't understood because I move on to the next topic, assuming that you have understood the previous topic okay. and things just keep on building. The key over here is to understand, for example, these equations that we have uh, studied, mm -hmm. you must understand what each each situation means, what are the different ways the data can be given, how to plug in data into these equations, and once you have plugged in data, I mean, for example, uh, see, you were calculating, you were supposed to calculate the distance, distance. and you so mentioned you, the you answer see. in meters per second. Yes. So these sort of intuitive checks, you must always have those on that whatever you are doing, does it make sense or not? So you'll only be able to check that when you yourself know uh, what makes sense and what doesn't. Okay. So for that, you need okay. to have full grip and full confidence on these topics and they're easy. A-level, uh, IGCSE physics is easy. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I asked A-levels and ASL students, they say IG is really easy. Everyone is saying that, yeah. I mean, always, that is the thing, whenever, and that is what I ideally like to do with students. Uh, I mean, everybody has their own uh, limitations, but True. the ideal thing to do is just go through these concepts as soon as possible. I mean, I won't spend a lot of time on these. What I want to do with all my students is to practice the maximum number of past papers. This last kid that I, I'll show you the review his mother has put on the Facebook. And the only thing uh, I did with that particular student was that I practiced a lot of past papers with him. So also do past paper questions like repeat in the boards? Uh, it's not that exactly, but similar questions are there. For example, exact copy paste questions aren't there. I oh, mean, no, no, like same, um, you can say it like is, it way. is, it is, it is. Okay. Uh, towards the end of today's class, I'll show you a few. Okay, uh, so. Where is the review step? Here it is. So this particular student, his name is, uh, his name, what was his name? I even forgot his name. Abdurrahman. Abdurrahman studied, this particular student, uh, it's reviewed by her mother. She studied, she covered the entire physics labels with a few past papers practiced during the month of uh, June, July and August. She took oh, wow. four classes per day, uh, mm -hmm. per week, but mm -hmm. the, she was able to cover the whole syllabus in three months. And I mean, her attempt is the same as yours. It's going to be in May, June, 2022, but she has already covered the whole syllabus in school while she, her teacher teaches. It would just be a revision for her. True. And yeah. this one, this one kid, he has already appeared for his exams. He got an A and uh, he studied math and physics with me. Oh, so uh, the thing with him was, again, uh, he would practice a lot. The key to these math and physics, these two papers, the key is to practice a lot. Practice a lot of past papers. Practice a lot of past papers and be true with yourself. Be true with yourself. If you understand something, it's fine. If you don't understand something, put up a question. I don't understand this thing. Please explain it to me again. <coughs> and answers don't matter as much as the path or the solution matters. Be sure about what we are doing and why we are doing. Never, there should never be ambiguity that why did we did this thing, why not something else? 
and when there are multiple paths to any solution i'll tell you that for example i told you for this particular question uh, mm -hmm. it could be solved using any of these equations as long yeah. as it has an s Correct. but but we would need the value of v as well mm -hmm. Yes. And here, since we are just told that the body is dropping, so we have got just it u. Is u. Yeah. All right. We have got u. We have got t, and the value of a is the same as the value of g. So this is the most suitable equation to use. These other two equations, if I had the data, if, for example, if I had the value of v. But these so two... other equations. Uh, I mean, it's just asking for distance, right? So you can't really use the other. I can, I can, I can rearrange this equation to make oh, yeah, S the subject. Yeah. Oh, okay. To make okay. S the subject and then I can find out the value of S using this equation as well. But the thing is, mm -hmm. I don't have the value of V. V, yeah. So we need, yeah. Okay. So it would, I mean, still I can use these equations, but it would mm -hmm. unnecessarily prolong the solution. For example, first I can find the value of V using the first equation, V is equal to U plus AT. And then use that value of V in this, S is equal to U plus V by 2 into T. So it would unnecessarily prolong the solution where I can just find the solution using this one equation instead of using two. But the answer I get using the first method of using two equations or the second method which we used of using just this equation, we'd get the same answer both ways. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. As long as you're putting the values correct, you're doing the correct calculations, uh, the answer would be the same no matter which path you choose. Yes, sir. Okay, so with regards to syllabus, I'm not exactly mm -hmm. sure. Like, what is your question? Uh, there is. Oh, so I was asking about like weightage and all, you know, because mm. all together. Yeah, so I just wanted to ask on the time because I have noticed myself, like, whenever I do uh, past papers, right, I always take it um more than like, so for example, paper four is like one hour and 15 minutes. Mm. I don't get the time to complete it in one hour and 15 minutes. I have done one paper four of physics. Mm. Uh, just, I just wanted to test myself, like, how much do I know and all. Mm -hmm. And I took more than 1 hour 15 minutes. It was, like, ha 1 hour 45 minutes or something. Have you finished this labels once at your school? No, so we, um, like, this year we're going to finish it, like, by mm. uh, Jan or I understand, I understand. And I understand. then we're going to, they said that we're going to start doing past papers, past the, papers. The and... first past paper that you'll do, you'll take around 2 hours to finish it. Yeah, so you'll I'm, do, you'll do the it. next one. You'll do the next one. Maybe the time will reduce by five minutes. Then the time will reduce by ten minutes. Then the time will reduce by fifteen minutes. So you keep on solving papers, and the time it okay. takes you to solve the papers, it keeps on reducing. So now, okay. since mm -hmm. I have studied this thing ages ago and having taught this thing multiple times, if I were to solve it, I could mm -hmm. solve it easily within let's say forty-five minutes the whole thing. For example, mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it it just with practice things become easier and with practice you are able to see a variety of things so each for example the questions that you get on your exams they are different situations and yeah. you have to find a way out of that situation so the more you are used to finding yourselves in different unknown situations and finding your way out of that the more comfortable you will get with that thing and the quicker you will be able to solve you'll be able to find your way out uh, the next time you come across such an equation or such a situation Okay, so it's just a matter of practice. Right now, right now, our number one priority is to finish the whole course content once. That's number one priority. Once we have done that, then the priority is to solve a few question papers complete, ignoring the time bound. I mean, we'll be noting down how how long it takes us, but mm -hmm. we won't be bothered whether we finish it within time or not. Once okay. you have solved five past papers at least, then okay. we'll start taking count of time, like how long it has taken you to solve that particular past paper. But only after you have solved complete five past papers and discussed the solution with me, only then will I be bothered after that whether you complete it within time or not. Before that, uh, I know that it's not possible to finish that within time. Mm -hmm. The very yeah. first time you attempt it, it's a, even though you have understood and uh, applied those concepts many a times, but attempting past paper is a to totally different game. Yes, yeah, so that's why, like, few questions they were like, I couldn't get because we didn't do it in the syllabus, like magnet, uh, hmm. magnets and all. We started that topic this year only. Hmm. So there were few questions which we didn't do it in school. So I had hmm. to like skip those, but rest were like all right. But I had to like, yeah, when I had to like compare with the marking but, scheme, but I, I tell you, I tell you, even with these kinematics questions, which we have just done, there would be past paper questions that you just stare at them and you won't be able to make sense of what it's saying. There would be yes, quite so, a few like yeah. that at this stage, 
at this mm-hmm. stage but once you have solved five or six past papers then it will come naturally to you and then you will be easy with whatever question that you get okay okay so thank you for that yes, no sir. problem no problem okay uh, so we are done with this one uh, the second one i mean i gave you all the equations that you would use for solving this it's just a matter of changing this particular value so in your calculator you can write this thing and then you can another thing for your calculator whenever you clear your mm-hmm. screen always use the ac button never use the on button to clear the screen that is another mistake many students make do you use on button to clear the screen or the ac button as of now uh, so like in a hurry i use the on button sometimes but the, ac the, button the, the reason being the reason the reason being if you use the on button it deletes the history as well so for example if i have solved this question and if i clear the screen using ac i can okay. always press the up key i'll be back to the solution i'll just change one in this one i'll uh, press the back key back key i'll uh, get to one uh, delete it write two over here press is equal to i'll get the answer again to clear the screen i can oh, either okay. e- either just yeah. edit the previously written you don't have to write the whole thing again and again already so the easy button okay mm-hmm. and another use is that for sometimes uh, you do calculations which are not used exactly in the last part but would would be used in the later part of the question in let's say the next part or the part after that so then you can always the, the thing is that if you can clear the screen and keep the history data in your calculator why would you erase it uh, i understand that unknowingly students press this on button or whatever till the time they don't know but now since you know that keeping that history is important these sort of small changes these are the small changes which keep on adding a few seconds which help you keep saving a few seconds in your exams and those seconds they accumulate into minutes and those minutes they accumulate into quarter of an hour or something eventually okay so uh, not only learning the course content but also how to use the calculator most efficiently how to use the data of the equations most efficiently we'll keep on learning these techniques as we go along okay so the thing uh, to take away from today's class is to always clear the screen using ac button at AC now as of button. now it would mm-hmm. seem something like petty to you like i mean what's the difference if i use on or ac but <laughs> uh, but when you get into the exam equation then specifically when you get into the a level exam equations this thing would come in really handy if you keep on studying these science subjects because oh, complexity yes, of the questions they keep on increasing Oh, okay. okay. And mm-hmm. these things, these tiny bits, these tiny seconds that you save on each solution, they give you more confidence that I'm able to solve a question quickly as well as save the precious seconds for your exam time as well. Okay, so quickly on to this uh, last question number two. Hopefully you have copied all these equations. Oh, yes, sir. Okay, on to this last question, please. Question okay, two. Sir. Okay. So they're asking us uh, the distance and the time, right? Mm. So how long does it take the object to reach the ground? And okay, an object falls from a helicopter hits. Uh, okay, since we are in the initial okay. few questions, I'll give you okay. another thing. Uh, I think I did this the last time as well, but I'll repeat it over here. Whenever okay. you have got the question, the first thing that you do is you have to write down what you have to calculate. So here you have to calculate S and you have to calculate T. Or D. Yes, D. sir. time okay the data that is given is that u is equal to no 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 sir so we need to calculate the distance and the time apparently because speed is already given us s is distance speed is u and v oh okay yeah, yeah my bad my bad okay s is distance okay distance, so yeah, uh, okay. and it hits the ground with the speed so since it's falling from the helicopter obviously it would have an initial velocity zero and its yeah. v mm-hmm. is going to be 30 meters per <clears throat> second okay and we know yes, since sir. a body free falling it has got acceleration due to gravity 
a is equal to g which is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared okay uh, at igcse level you can even use 10 it's fine if you do that rounding up but the, oh, preci okay. the precise calculation precise is uh, hmm. okay okay so now we have to calculate s for s s s let's see the equations okay okay uh, okay now the s is in these three equations two three and four so i have mm -hmm. to use one of these three the two and three they require time as well i do not have time right now Okay, so the equation that I can use is the fourth one right now yeah, without time, has... no time. All right. Yeah. So yes. what I'll do is I'll simply write down this equation. I write down V squared <coughs> is equal to U squared plus 2AS. I have to calculate S so I make S, S the subject. So I'll get V squared minus U squared divided by 2A is equal to S. And, yeah. and then I write down the values V is equal to 30 squared minus U is equal to 0 squared zero. divided by 2 into 9.81. So 30 squared will be how much? Uh, it's 900. It's 900. 900. Yeah. All right. Yeah, uh, so even if you don't know 900, uh, just write 30 squared divided by 2 into 9.81 and give me the answer. Give me the distance. So, uh, can you repeat? 30? 30 squared. Minus 0 oh, squared okay. wouldn't mean anything because it's 0, right? It's, yeah, 0, yeah. So, so simply squared. we'll have to do 30 squared divided by 2 into 9.81. Oh, okay. So, one second. So, I got 45.87. 45.87 or roughly 46 it would mean? Yeah. Are you sure 45.87? You did uh, 30 squared divided by 2 into 9.81. 2 into 9.81, yes. 2, 2 into 9.81. Yeah, yeah. I'll okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, your answer is fine. I just want to make a check. If you do it, uh, 900 divided by 20. 900 divided by <coughs> 20, right? Hmm. 45. 45, okay. Yeah. So, your answer was 45.81? 87. 87. 87. And it would be in? Unit? Uh, distance right meters meters okay. perfect okay and now I the, uh, this is what I've calculated T remains so T I can use what equation give me an equation quickly which I can use uh, for T one second we need to calculate uh, you can use the last equation right no the last equation, if we have to calculate T, we can never use the last equation because T isn't no, no, there so at all. Sir, we, hmm. yeah, wait, 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 wait. we can use the, um, wait, you have, we can use the second equation. We can use the first one as well. Always go for the simplest one, whichever, oh, okay. uh, first, first and two are equally easy. So whichever you say for second one, let's, oh, right, let's, sorry. let's do it with both. Let's do it with both oh, and right. see that we get the same answer. Okay. Oh, wow. So we have got V is equal to U plus A T. To calculate T, I have to make T the subject or e okay. even I can put the data this way as well. So V is 30, U is 0 plus 9.81 times T. So it becomes 30 is equal to 9.81 times T or 30 divided by 9.81 is equal to T. So T is how much? Have to do 30 divided by 9.81, um, which will give you uh, 3.05. 3.05. Unit? Uh, times uh, this thing. Uh, speed, right? Um, oh, sorry. Wait, seconds. Seconds. Okay. Now, using the other equation that we had, uh, you said S is equal to U plus V by 2 into t. Two, into t yeah okay. the second question uh, yes, okay so it will become u is 30 so this will be t divided by 2 u is 30 so 30 distance was how much how much did we calculate 45.87 right 
Yeah, yes, yeah, so forty-five point eight seven. So do we have to do uh forty-five point eight seven? Okay, I'll divide it. Seven divided by fifteen. So do we do forty five yeah okay forty five point eight seven yeah okay. Uh so I got three point zero five yeah same same answer. Okay, so it doesn't matter which yes, equation you use. Always try to use the simpler one if the simpler one does the job. All right, sir. Okay, okay. So yes, this done. Let's quickly move on to the next topic. The next topic that we have is of uh, density. Uh, what's density? What is density? So your voice is um lagging. Okay, what is density? Uh, yes, yeah, so, sorry. Um, density is like uh the mass of um like the ratio of any mass mm -hmm. to a particular substance of that volume. To the volume of that particular substance, correct? Okay, the ratio of mass to the volume of any particular substance, and we know. Uh, so, for example, density is represented by the symbol rho, is equal to mm -hmm. mass over volume. So, if the denominator increases, the density increases. If the sorry, if the numerator increases, the density increases. If the denominator decreases, the density increases. Mm -hmm. So, what's the uh, unit kg meter cube, right? Kg meter, no kg per meter cube. Okay, kg. Kg per meter cube. All right. So this is this. All right. So to calculate density, calculate density. How do we calculate density? Uh, this thing can be rearranged to find mass. Can be rearranged to find volume. Can be rearranged to find density. Out of these three quantities, we need to have two, and we can find the third one using this. For example, if we have got uh density and mass of anything we can find volume if we have got density and volume we can find mass and if i have got mass and volume we can find density so out of these three quantities we need to have two and we can find the third one using this equation correct yes so, so we need to have two um out of these two, three, in any equation if you have got one equation this is the rule for math yeah. if you have got one equation you can find value mm -hmm. of one unknown so for example yes. if you have got x cubed plus x squared plus 5x is equal to 3 you can find out the value of x for but if you have got x plus y is equal to 3 you cannot find value of x or y for this second one you will need at least two equations whenever you have got two variables you will need two equations when you have got one variable you will need one equation if you get three variables you will need three equations this is the rule for math Something you must have covered in algebra. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So, uh, can you give me the triangle? You know, like how for speed and distance, how we did. Like, if you want to calculate mass, you can do this. Just multiply by this and all. Okay. So, rho is equal to mass by volume. Okay. Mass is on. equal to rho into v. And v is equal to rho by m. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so just give me the formulas. Okay, yeah, yeah, perfect. It's just rearrangement of the first equation. First, I made rho the subject, then I made m the subject, and then I made v the subject. Yes, sir. Okay, this then the question is that how do we find out the uh, volume of first regularly shaped solids then irregularly shaped subjects so for example if i have got the regularly shaped solid for example a cube i know that i can do length and mass i can always find using a uh, physical balance all right physical or electrical balance i can always okay. find out the mass of anything then to calculate mm -hmm. volume if it's a regularly shaped object, so for example, it's a cube, I can always do side into side into side. Or if it's like a rectangular cube, it would be length into width into height. 
length into width this gives me area area into third dimension gives me the volume so area is 2d volume is 3d three dimensional quantity it uses three dimensions for example the paper of the register on which you are writing you can just find out the area because the height of this paper is negligible you have got the length of the paper you have got the width of the paper the thickness of the paper is negligible so it just has an area if you have got the register in which you are writing the notebook that notebook would have mm -hmm. a volume it has the I mean the paper has a volume as well but it's the third dimension uh, that's negligible very small in millimeters perhaps um, the register that you have it has got the same length as that of the papers within it it has got the same width as the papers within it and then it has got thickness far more than the papers in it equal to the number of papers that it has so it's uh, if you want to imagine the 3d it would be the full register if you want to imagine the 2d or the area it would just be one paper so for example plots of land that we have we give their sizes in terms of area okay so a plot of this by this dimension 250 meters squared uh, this many yards this many meters squared but if we have got a tank for tanks we do not give area because the capacity of tank capacity of any object it's given in terms of its volume got it so can you repeat the last one actually mm -hmm. I didn't get that. Uh, so for example what are the things for which we get for which we usually use uh, dimension uh, area so the plot of land we give the area mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. what's the width of the plot and what's the length of the plot so you have got the uh, area in meter squares or yard squared all right but for any container to see the capacity of any object how much can it hold within it we give the volume so for example you'll never have the area of a bottle you'll mostly have heard about volume of a water the yeah, yeah. Uh, the bottles all that we have they mention 1.5 liters or whatever the quantity of liquid in it similarly the pots that we have it gives the uh, mentions the quantity how much liquid can it withhold within it within it its area is not that much useful in everyday life obviously for scientific experiments you can use the area as well it might come in handy but for everyday use these objects they are mostly used for their capacity and that's what we get from from volume got it yes sir okay so we were talking about how to find volume of regularly shaped and irregularly shaped objects so Uh, for regularly shaped objects, I told you that we multiply their sides, whatever dimension, the length, width, and height is given. For irregularly shaped object, again, we find the mass using the... Uh, you find the mass using the electric or physical balance, and you find the volume. How do you find volume of an irregularly shaped solid? Hmm, question. Are you there? Uh, yes, so, so just one second. You know the, hmm. the what is it? I just need to get my charger. Just one second. Sorry, so actually my battery was um, running and I, I just left. Okay. Sorry, so. Okay, uh, how, so. how do I find volume of an irregularly shaped object? Um, so the volume, like, you can measure it by, um, by, like, filling it with water or something. Filling what with water? The, the displacement can. Like the object, the we can measure it by. Think about what you're saying and then say. Okay. Um. Uh, 
okay here is what i'll do i'll fill okay. i'll partially fill a <coughs> uh, this tube this volume tube with water what's this called measuring cylinder or measuring tube okay when i fill this tube with water it will show me water level up to a certain mark mm -hmm. okay i will note that down then i will place my solid within this tube when i place the solid the level of water will rise yeah the water level rises yeah okay so i it gives me a new volume the difference in these two volume levels the difference in these two volume levels is the volume of the solid so okay, you just have to minus okay. Mm -hmm. So the water it changed or the measuring cylinder it changed the reading of the volume just because I placed solid in it. So that change accounts for the change uh, the volume of the solid itself. This is how I find the volume of a solid. Okay, how do I find uh, volumes of liquids? How do I find mass of liquid? Uh, so the mass we can find out by the liquid which we just found out right now. Um, like the known amount. No, 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 uh, no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. This measuring cylinder it calculates volume. It does not calculate mass. Oh, the, okay. So like, we already found out then the mass of the. The mass of the solid, I can place a solid on top of a balance and okay. it will give me the mass of that. How do I place a liquid on top of a balance? So you can't... If I, if I pour water on top of a balance, will it stay over there or will it just splash all over? It will splash all over. So how do I find the uh, mass of liquid then? So by not putting the water in <laughs> <laughs> So what I do is, what I do is, first I put an empty beaker on top of the pan, okay, and I take its reading. Empty oh, yeah, beaker. Do that and take the reading off. And then fill it with water or whichever liquid. Okay. And mm -hmm. then I take the second reading. So the mass obviously would have increased. That increase in mass is the mass of the liquid. So delta M. Or mm -hmm. M2 minus M1, M1 being mass of the beaker, empty mass of the beaker, mass of empty beaker, and M2 is mass of beaker with liquid in it. So the difference in the so two is, is the mass again? of Sorry. M2 what is, is M2 mass again? mass of beaker with liquid in it. Okay, okay, mass of okay. with liquid in it, and M1 is mass of empty beaker. So the difference in the two masses will give me the mass of liquid. The beaker is the same. Don't change the beaker. Mm -hmm. First you put empty beaker, then you bring another beaker fit with the <laughs> liquid. Yeah. It it wouldn't yeah. work. You have to use yes. the same beaker. All right. So this is how you get the mass of the beaker and uh, then on the balance, right? On the balance, yes. Uh, the electric balance or the physical balance, whichever you can use. And so just give me one set. No, I'm hmm. just writing these down. So. I can send you this book as well. Uh, it would have the details. It would just add on to what you're already covering in your other book. Uh, all right, so I don't, I don't mind. You can consider it on email. Uh, uh, sure, send, just text send. me your email after the class. I'll send it to you. All right, so thank you. No problem. And this note taking thing, if it slows you down, you, I mean, I'll send you the recording. You can always use. It's better if you take notes during the class, but even okay. if you miss something, uh, mm -hmm. I have started the recording and I'm still recording. These are for the purpose of revision that if ever you feel like that there is something that you need to go over again, you have these recordings, you can go over them again and again. Yeah, so that, yeah, yeah. you have already sent me the previous recordings also. Yeah, mm. so that will help if I need to. I wonder if you check that one or not. Oh no, I was checking on my phone. The phone, it was not working on my phone for some reason. So I need to check it on the laptop. 
is uh, is know, it was... is your youtube account on your phone uh, signed in with the same email address that you gave me i guess so give me one second i'll check that as well if i give access to the correct address come on not over here Okay, STG. Okay, th these things you have noted down, which I was telling you. Yes, sir, I have noted down. Okay, how do you find uh, the? How do you find the volume of liquid? So one second, I on this one second. Yeah, um, volume of liquid you. You take a, a cylinder and you put the water inside, um, and mm. then you can uh, put a, a object inside, and you can minus that V two minus V one. The easy questions they confuse you the most. You simply pour the liquid in the this measuring cylinder, cylinder and you'll have the volume. That's it. So you're asking, oh, okay, you were asking volume of the, oh, okay, I thought you were asking volume of the area shape, okay. Okay, uh, yes, the same thing you can do, the same thing, the same way you found the mass of liquid, you can find, uh, find the mass of air or gas, all okay, right. oh, so first, first oh. of all, you, with vacuum pump, you uh, make the object in uh, a vacuum, in which you have to okay. put the gas and calculate its mass. So you calculate the mass of the uh, that container, sans, I mean, excluding, you have vacuumed the gas out of it. And then you fill in the gas in it and you take the mass again and the change in the masses is the mass of the gas in it. So okay. you put the mass of, uh, of air in the flow. Okay, yes, sir. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Volume is volume is. Uh, you fill a liquid. You fill a this liquid. What is this thing called? A uh, volume tube. You fill this volume tube with certain water, and then you pour gas in it. Its volume would change. The uh, volume of liquid would change. That change would be the volume of the gas. Of the gas, okay. 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 Uh, the question that I've got is that uh, some objects, when I place in water, they sink, and some objects, when I place in water, they float. Which objects sink and which objects float? For example, sometimes if you put a nail in a bucket of water, the nail sinks. Mm -hmm. But the ship, which uses far more iron and steel, and there are people on it, it does not sink. Uh, so because it depends on the object, how heavy and how uh, a ship is heavier than the nail. Uh, no, is so it? I mean, I mean, it depends on um because you're putting in water, right? So the, the, uh, the there are dense. there are two things. Yes, now you have used the right term. Uh, it depends on density. Yeah. It depends, it depends. on what? It depends on density. So denser objects, they sink into rarer objects or they sink into objects with lesser density. If the density, okay, density of a drop of honey, I've got a bottle of honey, a jar of honey. Okay. okay. And I take a drop out of it. Okay. Density of this drop, is it going to be different from the, uh, different from the density in this jar, the honey that's there in this jar? Yes, it will. It's not. Remember, so it, density is the can, ratio of mass to volume. If I've drawn a smaller can, mass, I've drawn a smaller from, volume as well. Oh, okay. Density, so density, change. density mm -hmm. is the is the property of an object. So no matter if I take a spoon of water or a bottle filled uh, bottle filled with water, they'll both have the same density. Because if the mass is increasing, if you say the mass is increasing, so has the volume increased. Mm -hmm. And similarly, if in case of a spoon, if the volume has decreased, so has the mass. So the ratio of mass to volume, it is the same, usually in uniform liquids and uniform solids. There are some objects, for example, human beings, 
we are not equally dense throughout the length of our body mm-hmm. okay some parts of our body they are hollower some parts of our body they are denser correct okay but the regularly shaped objects most of the sh- objects which we are dealing with or for which we have to do the calculations are the uniform liquids there are uni- yes, therefore liquid. liquids okay. in which the density is the same throughout that is a uniform liquid there mm-hmm. are liquids which are for example uh, solutions which are not mixed properly there are sediments left in them so in parts of the solution the density will be more in parts of the solution density will be less yes okay okay but for such objects such as honey or water the density throughout them is the same whether i take a spoon of it or a drop of it a bucket of it a house filled with it the density would be the same because this ratio of mass to volume it would stay intact okay yes, so one thing about the objects which are uh, the question was which objects would sink and which objects would float the first thing so, is the first thing is density if the density of an object is more than the density of water it will sink mm-hmm. in water if the density of an object is less than the density of water it will float no mm-hmm. matter how so, much it ma- how, how how much its mass is so, so mass I of have a question do we have to like learn uh, the values of the water and uh, the density no yeah no, like not all not not of... no not now as of now no you will okay. be given these you will be given a few of these and what you have to learn by virtue of past paper practice you'll automatically learn those right now you don't oh, have to worry about yeah. any of that okay? okay okay so the density if you say that for example a ship it has got a lot more mass it has got a lot more volume as well yeah. and its mass compared to its volume is less as compared to a nail whose mass with ratio to its volume is more with ratio to its volume is the key over here its density is more uh, so can you just repeat that once again so okay it's okay for example if i've got a nail okay and i beat it and spread it and its area increases mm-hmm. its volume has increased its mass has remained the same its density would change yeah makes sense it has increased Okay, okay. Yes, please. Mhm. Okay. So if mm-hmm. I spread an object, if I spread an object and its volume increases, its volume increases. Uh spreading is not such a good term to use, but for now for the sake of understanding it would do. If the okay. volume of an object increases while its mass stays the same. Mm-hmm. If volume of an object increases while its mass stays the same, its density has decreased. Decrease if the So okay. the volume is same and the mass is the same right mm. the okay. ships the reason they do not, do not sink is they have got a very large hollow hulk at the bottom of the ship at the bottom of the ship there is like this across the length of the ship huge large uh, container sort of thing like yeah. empty space yeah. which increases its volume but does not increase the mass as much that is the reason it stays afloat the second reason this is a bit complicated the second reason and uh, even if you don't fully grasp it it's fine but just hear it out once when yes, i sir. put any object in water for example a glass it's filled up to its brim with water or any liquid whenever i place any solid in it or any object in it the water will fall off from this liquid right mm-hmm. the water will fall yes. off from this glass or this beaker this water that falls it's called water of displacement it's called water, water... displacement okay okay i have to compare mass of water of displacement with mass of object if mass of object is greater than the mass of water of displacement the object will sink sink okay if the mass of the object is greater than the and if the mass of the object is less than the mass of water of displacement the It'll object float. will float okay so these are the two reasons the second uh, whichever you find easier to digest you have to remember both you have to remember both the first one being more so uh, i'll leave you with a few questions on this topic as well if you could take a screenshot these are relatively easy uh, uh, mostly there is play of unit conversion be careful about that 
other than that these questions are simple and easy just take a screenshot and we'll discuss them in the next class if you have solved these by then okay so so i took a screenshot right. so uh mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. send me this uh this uh what is it called physics uh textbook you can send it to me on mail like you have a mail right uh i okay. had your mail if you could please text me again yes you sent sure, it to sure. me if you could no text problem. me once again i'll send it to no you problem, inshallah sir. tonight all right I'll, yes sir no all problem right. thank, thank you, you so much bye bye so have a good day bye, -bye.